Hello and welcome to another HPE Aruba Networking's VSG Expanded Series. In this series, I'll be covering AOS 8 to 10 migration using familiar concepts of AOS 8 and explain how they map over to AOS 10. I'm Miguel Guerra, and in this first of four videos, I'll walk through a high-level traffic flow comparison between AOS 8 campus mode and AOS 10 tunnel mode and explain the differences. I'll also walk through a sample migration project workflow that's featured in the VSG to help us all get started on the same page in this series. Let's dive right in. Here we have an example AOS 8 controller-based deployment. It contains a campus AP, mobility controller cluster, a mobility conductor pair, and an airwave server. Wi-Fi client traffic is encapsulated in a GRE tunnel between the AP and controller cluster. And as traffic from Wi-Fi endpoints reach the AP or its radio interface, it is encapsulated and forwarded through the wired line to the mobility controller. The controller then inspects the traffic, assigns a user role, tags it, and forwards it on a local interface to a trunk user VLAN. IPsec secures all control plane traffic exchanged between the mobility conductor and mobility controller. Additionally, two management protocols are also used. PAPI between AP, mobility controller, and mobility conductor, and AMON sent from the mobility controller and mobility conductors to Airwave. Now let's take a look at AOS 10 tunnel mode. While Wi-Fi client traffic is handled similarly in both AOS 10 tunnel mode and AOS 8 campus mode, there are some differences. In this example, both platforms encapsulate Wi-Fi client traffic between the AOS 8 controller or AOS 8 gateway and the respective APs. But in AOS 10, you can now configure it to also encapsulate GRE with IPsec. Although AOS 8 uses only GRE tunnels by default, AOS 10 now offers IPsec over GRE so that you can encrypt both control and data traffic end-to-end -end if your deployment or security policies require it. Next, the mobility conductor and airwave appliances used by AOS 8 are replaced by Central. And in turn, IPsec, AMON, and SNMP traffic between appliances is replaced by TCP port 443 management traffic sent from APs and gateways to Central. Now here are some key considerations for migration. Some of these may be obvious. Gather your subscription and license information from your customer. Make sure the customer's HPE GreenLake account has been created. Verify APs and controllers can all reach central. This is specifically for customers who have security policies in place, preventing APs and controller appliances from reaching the internet. To convert controller-managed APs, the associated controller should be running AOS 8.10.0.12, 8.12.0.1, 8.12.0.2, or later before beginning an upgrade. Make sure AP's controller discovery is configured properly. For example, if APs are configured with static LMS IP, make sure the AP system profile is pointing the APs to the cluster's VRRP address and not an individual MC. This helps prevent APs from becoming stranded if they reboot and start searching for the IP address of the first MC while you are in the middle of upgrading to AOS 10. Last one on this list, Make sure campus AP management interface and wireless tunnel mode clients do not reside in the same VLAN. If they do in AOS 8, make sure they're moved to a different VLAN before AOS 10 configuration is done. Now, we all know that there's always more than one way to do things, especially when network architecture varies so much from one customer to the next. That being said, this is an example workflow you'll find in the VSG upgrade guide. The first step is to verify the two AOS 8 MCs are L2 connected. Then move all APs to controller 1. Once all APs are in controller 1, upgrade controller 2. Software can be downloaded from the HPE networking support portal. Next, identify a single AP and upgrade it using the AP convert CLI command. Once the AP is converted and broadcasting, test client connectivity. Troubleshoot if there are any issues. Once client testing is complete, move your first group of APs to what is now Gateway 2, whether it's by AP group, by floor, or by campus building. Repeat your testing along with roaming. Once this passes, repeat the last step to all APs are on AOS 10. Finally, upgrade the second controller 
validate all changes, and monitor. The detailed version of this workflow is in the VSG page linked in the description of this video. All right, this wraps up our first video. In the next three videos, we'll dig deeper by breaking down the differences in config models between AOS 8 and AOS 10 and provide an example of how to map an existing AOS 8 hierarchy into the new AOS 10 scope-based structure in Central. I'll walk through real-world discovery tips and examples to help you prepare for your migration more effectively. And finally, I'll demo a configuration discovery tool designed to save hours of manual CLI configuration parsing and hierarchy mapping. So stick with me because my goal is to help you migrate more effectively and efficiently to help you deliver the best possible service for your customers. Thank you for watching.